Hi, Gary Stearman with another Prophecy in the News Daily Update, Friday, August the 3rd, and yesterday the Jerusalem Post uh, published an article entitled, Ahmadinejad Calls for the Annihilation of Israel. And you may have heard excerpts from Ahmadinejad's speech. Uh, Ahmadinejad had uh, this to say on the opening day of Ramadan to ambassadors from Islamic countries, Uh, he said that the, quote, horrible Zionist current has been managing world affairs for 400 years. And he added, liberating Palestine would solve all the problems. I might just say parenthetically that uh, a number of people have suggested over the years that liberating Palestine and destroying the Jews would eliminate all the world's problems. Uh, In a speech published uh, on uh, the Jerusalem Post website Thursday, uh, August the 2nd, uh, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad said the ultimate goal of world forces must be the annihilation of Israel. Speaking to ambassadors from Islamic countries uh, ahead of Chod's Day, which is their way of saying Jerusalem Day, they don't even call the city of Jerusalem by its real name, Uh, They give it the Arabic name Chodz, uh, an annual Iranian anti-Zionist event established in 1979 by the Ayatollah Khomeini. Uh, It fell this year on August 17th. Uh, Ahmadinejad spoke of what he called this horrible Zionist current. In other words, a a kind of, he pictured Zionism as a kind of an undertow a tidal force flowing through the world for the last 400 years and ruining every good thing on earth. And of course, for him and for his Arab confederates, the Islamic world desires the annihilation of uh, Israel. Repeating traditional anti-Semitic slurs, the Iranian president accused quote-unquote Zionists of controlling the world's media and financial system. It was Zionists, he said, who were, quote, behind the scene of the world's main powers, media, monetary, banking centers. They are the decision makers to the extent that the presidential election hopefuls of the United States must go and kiss the feet of the Zionists to ensure their election victory. So he really got with the program when he spoke on Ramadan, uh, enunciating the need to annihilate Israel. The call to destroy the Jews is as old as Haman (laughs) in Persia, who tried to create a false law under the law of the Medes and the Persians that would destroy all the Jews. Haman and Ahmadinejad have a lot in common. He added that, uh, again, I'm going to repeat this sentence, Liberating Palestine would solve all the world's problems. And he said Chod's Day, that is Jerusalem Day, is merely a strategic solution for a Palestinian problem, uh, as it is to be viewed as a key for solving the world's problems. And he added, anyone who loves freedom and justice must strive for the annihilation of the Zionist regime in order to pave the way for world justice and freedom. And there you go. That's Ahmadinejad speaking on Chuz Day. I might add, and we talked about this a week ago or so, that the world does not want to recognize Zionism, and the world does not want to recognize Jerusalem. Uh, We have here a news item, dateline July uh, 23rd, 2012, from the Liberty Alert. The British Broadcasting Company's Olympic website purposely omitted Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Of course, this is before uh, the games that are taking place right now. The Israeli page of the 2012 Olympics website states, quote, seat of government Jerusalem, comma, though most foreign embassies are in Tel Aviv. Further, uh, more, the website lists East Jerusalem as the intended seat of government of Palestine, uh, and that, of course, even though there is no Palestine at present. You know, it's fascinating. Uh, we're talking here about Israel. We're talking about, uh, a, as Ahmadinejad himself 
uh, was careful to point out several times. We're talking about an anti-Zionist movement that worldwide. And you hear this term, Zion, and we go all the way back to William Heschler and Theodore Herzl, uh, two men who worked together. Heschler, of course, was uh, out of the uh, Church of the Plymouth Brethren, a dispensational church founded by John Nelson Darby. William Heschler got together uh, with Theodore Herzl, and guess what? They came up with the plan for the first Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland, 1897. Fifty years later, the United Nations recognized Israel. One year later, in uh, uh, 1948, Israel became a state. But the movement that brought statehood was the Zionist movement. There is real hatred for that word, Zion. A and we call it Zion in, uh, in Hebrew. The word is Tzion, and it is the Hebrew word for a marker or a place location. You know, for example, if you put a little flag on the end of a, of a stick and stick it in the ground, that's a marker. You've seen them for gas and electric lines, you know, if you call to have your li water lines marked or gas lines, they will put up these little flags in the ground. Well, uh, that's what a tzion is. It's a marker. And when David actually captured Mount Zion from the Jebusites, he named the mountaintop Zion, Zion, a marker, and it became literally the marker or the center of the spiritual world, and we have all kinds of proof of that in the Bible. By the way, this word uh, Zion, or Zion as we call it in English, occurs 153 times in the Bible, and one of my favorite locations and one of my favorite quotations in the Bible is Psalm 87 which says, <clears throat> his foundation is in the holy mountains. This refers to God. His foundation is in the holy mountains. And verse 2 of Psalm 87 says, the Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Now that's amazing. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. In other words, it is the Lord's chosen spot on earth, and he chose David to secure that spot uh, for as his holy mountain. Verse 3 says, Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. And the glorious things that are spoken, of course, are the things of the coming kingdom, which will be centered in Zion. And then verse 4 says, I will make uh, mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre and Ethiopia, this man was born there. And of Zion, it shall be said, this and that man was born in her. <clears throat> and the highest himself shall establish her. And so Zion becomes important as the redemptive center of the entire world. And of course, Christ came to Zion. He came and he spoke there many times before he was finally crucified. He spoke to the leaders of Israel, and they, they refused to recognize him. And he came as their king, but ended his life as redeemer uh, for the entire world. But the, the place of redemption, of course, was centered right there uh, at Mount Zion. <clears throat> the Lord shall count when he writeth up the people that this man was born there, Selah. Meaning, if you're in the book, it's because big things happened at Zion. You know, 153 times in the Bible is a lot of times to, for God to say exactly what he means about this place called Zion, which Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and his confederates wish to annihilate. They wish to eradicate Zionist history. They wish to uh, write their name on that mountain uh, so that the name of Israel and of the God of Israel will be forever wiped out. Guess what? It's not going to happen. We do live in amazing times when uh, men are brazen enough to stand up and demand the annihilation 
of Zion and of the Jews. And for that reason, uh, we're looking up. And so you keep looking up too.